Hi, so what I'm about to show you is not something that we normally do here on Seesaw or in a video, um, but I'm going to have I'm going to teach you a little phonics lesson, just like we used to do at school. We used to sit on the carpet, and I would have you write on whiteboards, and we would talk about different spelling rules. Um, you're not going to have your own whiteboard today, but I do want to quickly go over a little spelling rule that's going to help you when you take your spelling test this week. Now, in Spelling City, you saw your words. Five of them are sight words. Those are actually second grade sight words. You've been doing second grade sight words for a while now. That's why they're so tricky. Five of them are words that end with ed. Now, words can have endings. We call those suffixes. That means you have a regular word and you can add a suffix to it or an ending to change it up a little bit depending on how you're using that word. For example, this is the word call. I can add the suffix ed and it becomes a new word, doesn't it? Call. D. Called. This part is called the root word. That still means the same thing. If you are calling someone on the phone, call means the same thing, whether it's got the ending on it or not. But the ED shows us that we called someone, meaning it happened in the past. That's important because when we talk or when we're reading something, the things that are happening are not always happening right now in this moment, right? For example, I called my grandma on Saturday. I have to use d at the end of that word, ed, called, because I'm not in the process of calling my grandma right now. It was a few days ago that I called her. And you can tell that from my speech because I added that ED on the end that shows something happened before now. Well, what if I am calling my grandma right now in this moment? Well, then I would add a different suffix, right? I would add ING. Those uh, words with ING are not on your spelling list this week, but it is a suffix that I want to point out to you because you'll see it all the time in your reading and you already use it when you talk. ING, I-N-G, means that something is happening now. I have a couple little posters here. I have a couple little posters here that can help remind us of what these suffixes or word endings mean. So ed at the end of a word shows that it already happened. I called my grandma on Saturday. I kicked the ball when I was in that soccer game. ing shows that it's happening now. This girl is drawing a picture right now as we speak. We have to add those endings to the words to show when the thing happened. Now, I also want to point out to you that when we use that suffix ed, it actually sounds different depending on the word that it's going on the end of. Sometimes ed sounds like d. For example, this one says smelled. Try saying that, smelled. Do you hear how it sounds like d at the end? I smelled the flower. D, d, d. Sometimes that ed suffix sounds like just depends on the word. For example, this one shows the kid jumped. Try saying that word jumped. 
jumped sounds like it has a T on the end. And if you were sounding that word out and you wrote a T, I wouldn't mark it wrong because we, when we say the word jumped, it really sounds like a T is on the end. Now you know that it's actually ED. See that ED on the end there? The ED ending can sound like T. And I'll give you a hint. We never put a T on the end of a word to make it up to make the word happen in the past. It's always going to be an ED. So hopefully you can remember that in your writing going forward. Some words um, that end with ED, when we add that ending, it sounds like id, like planted. I planted flowers yesterday. It doesn't say planted or plant. It says planted, right? So we read that ed sound differently depending on the word that was the root word or the, the main word that it's attached to. On your spelling test this week, all the words that end with ed are words that sound like d at the end. I did that on purpose because I didn't want you to get confused with the different sounds that ed can make. Suffixes are something new for us and I wanted to keep it very simple for us this first time around. So we have a word like called. The word call is there and then we add ed and it just says d at the end. The word played is the same way. Played has play, then we add the ed and we just say d at the end. Notice that we didn't change the spelling of call when we added ed. I mean, the, we didn't change the spelling of the root word. We just added the ed. We didn't change the spelling of play. We just added ed. I have a lot of examples here, but I'm only going to show you three for right now. Another one is rolled. We didn't change the spelling of roll. We just added ed, and the ed says d at the end. We're going to keep talking about words that end with ed and sound like t at the end. We'll keep talking about words that end with ed and sound like id, plant id, at the end. But for now, I want you to remember that the words that you have on your spelling list this week, five of them, they end with ed to show that they happened in the past, and they all just make the d sound at the end of the word. I hope this little rule is going to help your reading and writing. And in Seesaw, when you respond to this video today, I'd like you to come up with a word that you know that ends with ed and says d at the end.